Now, live from Artie's Cut Rate Liquor Store, Shooting Range, Candle Shop, Bowling Alley, Massage Parlor, it's the Dave and Doc Podcast. Hello, hello. Happy day, happy day. It is a happy day. It's a big day. It is a big day. Every well, day is a good day. I guess it is. I don't know. 4 p.m. 4 p.m. You know what? I, it, yeah, well, well, all things Dave and Doc. That's Dave, A-N-D, Doc, D-O-C, dot com. Ooh. He is Dave. I am Doc. That's right. I tick, like TikTok. TikTok. I going to say TikTok. Anything. Go ahead. TikTok. 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 I still doesn't like us. I had somebody tell us we need to get on TikTok, and I said, oh, hold up. Hold up now. We tried to get on the TikTok, and they said our platform didn't match their values. And then they showed me a guy like crapping in a bag yes. and doing something. With it. And I was like, yeah. I don't know why we're not on the TikTok. Anyway. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. TikTok. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't know what I, I don't, I don't know what I did wrong, TikTok. Um, and we don't really care to be honest. It's episode 67 of the Dave and Doc podcast. That's right. Hello and welcome. And uh, 24,000 subscribers strong. Thank you, thank you. I wanted to hit 25 before the end of the year. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. But also, my goal at the beginning of the year was to hit 10,000 by the end of the year. So we're, we'll, we're getting, I mean, I we're, feel we're pretty making, good about we're it. We're making some progress, and we appreciate everybody listening. Uh, later in the show, coming up here shortly, we're going to talk to Rob Stats Guerrera. Rob, of course, formerly of Mike and Mike, uh, SB Nation, uh, ESPN radio and a cut and, and other forms too, not just Mike and Mike. Uh, but, uh, he's a gold standard podcast now is what he's doing. 49ers fan, of course, uh, because why wouldn't you be one? Um, and, uh, be there or be square. And, uh, Rob's got a lot of good stories and we'll talk to him a lot about, uh, the 49ers, uh, uh, the NFL in general, Russell Wilson's contract, which I, I I'm interested to know because he has, Rob kind of has some insider information, not insider information like, uh, hey, what's the stock price, but uh, insider information like he understands how contracts work and that sort of thing. So uh, some questions that we'll ask Rob there and, uh, of course, see what he thinks about the Niners going forward. So excited to talk to Rob Stats Guerrero. Um I want pretty, a cool pretty, pretty darn like legit when you look at the resume. Yeah, yeah. Pretty guy, the, darn legit. The guy's been around People super nice People need to nice check guy. him out. People need to check him out. Yeah, sure. link, link to uh, his podcast will be in our description. And uh, again, we'll talk to Rob here uh, shortly. In just a few moments. In just a few moments. Stay tuned. Time for that weather check. Time for that weather check. It's yes. cold and spitting snow. Yeah, Rob, Rob's a former radio guy, so I'm sure. It's still one of my favorite parts of the Howard Stern movie, Private Parts. When he was lying about his grand grandmother dying, he was like, "My grandmother died. I was there. It was terrible." Oh, by the way, it's seven fifteen and thirty eight <laughs> degrees. So anyway, while we were planning the funeral, because he was just being a jackass, and I loved it. Um, there's some truth uh, to that. I'll see. Uh, I'll see uh, what uh, Rob thinks of uh, working in radio. Of course, he's worked in a little different radio s- uh, s- scenarios <laughs> than I have, though. A little, so. bit, little, little, little uh, yeah. If I'm a professional broadcaster, Rob's a real professional broadcaster. Let's just put it that way. Legit. He's legit. Legit. So look forward to talking to Rob here. Uh, Yeah, thankful for his time for sure. And so as we progress forward, New Year's coming up soon. Mm. New Year 2024. What's it going to bring? What's it going to bring? Well, the first thing it's going to bring is some dad jokes. And then what I really want to know after this is, do you have any New Year's resolutions? But let's do the dad jokes first. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I'm a little disappointed they're not. I, I, I pulled this, you know, and, and so we'll, but we'll go. Okay. All right. Okay. What do you call someone who says they know all the words to Auld Lang Syne? S- s- say that again? <laughs> <laughs> it's the, should old acquaintance, uh, oh, yeah, Auld okay, okay. Lang Syne, okay. all the, a, I, li- I a liar, a liar. <laughs> <That's what> they, <laughs> <laughs> they are. Because I can't even say it. So there you go. Um, Hey, did you know that I'm going to make a New Year's resolution to drink more water? Yeah? Yeah. Problem is, uh, so far, I've only gotten as far as drink more. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but some of you out there... Yeah. Some of you... Ha ha. Uh, youth is when you're allowed to stay up late on New Year's Eve. Middle age is when you're forced to do it. Yes. That is, that is the truest statement 
Right. I think two years ago, I was in bed at 10 o'clock. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, did you hear about the guy who started fixing breakfast at midnight on December 31st? No. He wanted to make a New Year's toast. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> my gosh. Why did the man sprinkle sugar on his pillow on New Year's Eve? Why? He wanted to start the year with sweet dreams. I thought that was where that was going, but wasn't sure. Knock, knock. Who's there? Radio. Radio who? Radio not. It's a new year. Oh, no. (laughs) So, (laughs) any New Year's resolutions for you, Dave? And And that's the end of the show. (laughs) Um, uh, And now on to stats. You know. (laughs) Bring on stats. Bring on stats. I don't really do that. I don't really do the New Year's resolution. I've always just thought that was just... Like, just do it. Like, you, it doesn't have to be a new year. I get it's a fresh start. It's a new calendar Make it a year. habit. Make it a habit. You know. But Make it a habit. I don't really do it either. I, I was I, just, I just curious. No, I mean, like, actually... there's been times that I've said things like, you know, hey, I'm going to commit to three days to the gym every week, and or I'm going to commit to, you know, uh, you know, whatever. Um, but I, and, it, and it usually ends up being hard. Well, yeah. You do pretty good for a while, and then... The gym is always funny though this time of year, like right, like you get. Like, it's crazy busy. Second, Everybody's third up week in of there. January, and I mean, then everybody's by March, up in there. yeah, not so much. And then by April, not so much. Um, yeah, and then it, it definitely thins out. I mean, there's no, it, there's it, no doubt. It does. It thins out. So, but you know, I, I mean, I. There we go. What I would like to do, I mean, like a good New Year's resolution uh, is to spend less money this year. That'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't do that alone. Um, and, and your wife likes new appliances. She does. And new things. Yes. I, I'm the only thing she hasn't got rid of. So, <laughs> and it's coming, I'm sure. <laughs> there is no doubt it's coming. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess. Um, Can she buy you at Home Depot? Uh, yes. <laughs> Purchasable. Are you in the uh, lumber section? Yes, I am. <laughs> um, in the scratch and dent. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Not the big stiff board. No, no. Uh, I'm okay. in the okay. I'm in the it's wood <laughs> section. It's all sixty nine. Um it's where they stick me. Uh yeah, I mean, you know, uh, you know, I, I think one thing I would like to do this year, and I did it this year, as a matter of fact, but for next year, is to commit to like taking a couple weeks off every year. Yeah. Like consecutive. Yes. It's been really nice. Um it was very hard the first couple of days because I'm not used to like I'm used to. Well, it's a decompression. It, it is. It's a true decompression. And so yeah, so this year I've taken a couple of weeks. I'm still off. Uh, I'll be off till Thursday of next week. So yeah, me too. Awesome. Yeah. yeah so yeah. So I I'm you know so I'm off as long as the kids are off from school and be heading back work a couple of days and then have another weekend. So that's how that works. Um, but yeah, I, I, it, it's been really nice because, uh, like, as of Friday, I'd been off for a full week, and that I haven't done that in a long time. So, so I just had these vacation days, and they just kind of pile up, and you know, at some point, hours go away. So, I'm not sure at what point that is. Maybe I should look into that. Um, Take them now. But but yeah, so it was good, and uh, th- thanks to the other leadership at the company for allowing me to do that. And uh, I've stayed, you know, I've stayed kind of in touch you know i'm on my computer every day yeah <clears throat> you know answering pa- you have patient, to be patient right? questions and, and you have to be. signing notes and labs and different yeah so you're sorry still, about all my questions but it, it was leaking yellow and i didn't know what to do um <laughs> and thank you yeah, for from, saying from from your penis is not good no leaking yeah yellow yeah just it was kidding leaking yellow and <laughs> better uh, than green doc said uh, <laughs> doc said just cut it off um and so i did just uh, the tip. Just, just and the then tip. tie it off. Just Tourniquet. That's, that's why I'm in. You can buy those dip. tourniquets on Amazon. You know that kind of tighten it up. And it, 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 it's all about thirty bucks. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, oh, how about that? Anyway. Just tighten her up. Um, uh, so I have started doing something here recently, though. Uh, uh, speaking of uh, pus, just kidding. <laughs> Oozing the pus of um, justice. I can't stop. Well, you said justice, and you're you're onto it. I've started watching the People's Court. Oh my gosh! And this is the one with Judge uh, 
the Ma- Mary Marion. Sure, it is. Mitten. They're on like Judge Seven Hundred and Mary. What does, I have no idea. Um, who it is. Well, the I, show I, the show's actually off the air now. Wah, she did wah, her wah, wah. she did her last episode, and I think that like that's the end of the show. What? Yeah. So no, because uh, because they, they originally had they had they'll Wapner. bring it back. They had Wapner. Um, and if you haven't watched it, like I actually like her. Like she's not like a jackass like Wapner was. You know what I mean? Because Wapner was just an asshole. I mean, Wapner was just terrible. I mean, he was like just telling people to shut up and, you know, it's like, dude, like you're getting paid um, to mediate this. She's actually pretty good, um, but um, it's interesting. Do you remember uh, Doug Llewellyn? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still there. Dude's still there. And he's such a jackass. Like somebody comes out and he and he he's oh, like, wow. well, you lost this case, so how do you feel about that? And they're like, well, wow. not happy because I got to pay two thousand dollars. Well, you know, you kind of had it coming, right? You wow. made some stupid decisions. Like Doug, did you go f yourself, dude? <laughs> wow. And then they got the attorney that's there too, like interviewing people in the street and stuff. And that one's kind of weird, but uh, yeah, no, I've kind of got a. It's a new thing uh, watching the people's court. The people's court. Yeah, I like it. It's I, I love seeing some of the cases and a lot of parents getting sued by their kids and vice versa. Let me tell you something. That that is concerning to me. It is. That is concerning. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean I mean what I know. What, what are we living in? I mean I, I just I just don't understand. I don't either. Um that's depressing. I mean you're, you There was just an episode on last night or the night before uh, of a uh of a kid suing his mom uh, because because of a car she took away from him that was her car. It was in her name. He got a DUI and he, and then she sold it and she won't give him any of the money for the car. And it's like, what? what? And the judge is like, and it, what the hell do you want her to do? I mean, like, that... <sighs> he sued her for emotional distress. No, he... Yes, he did. Man, he absolutely did. that... See, (laughs) we're in trouble. That's where we're at in society. That's it. This this world is in trouble. Um, Do you hear me, world? um, Yeah. So we just had Christmas. We did. Uh, We did. did. Uh, Had a a great Christmas. Yeah, well, good. Good Girls had a great time. Little man man was into everything. Lots of fun things. Yeah. We got a dog. Oh, what's the dog's name? That was one of the, a buddy. 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 buddy, buddy. Um, we hanged out around. with Shep the Shepherd. That's right. That's right. They love the Shepherd. <laughs> the Shepherd found Jesus on Christmas, you know, yeah, in, well, in, the, in the manger. So that was good. We're good. good. Um, so, yep. Yeah, so, so no, girls are girls are liking their stuff. You know, American Girl doll stuff. Kate got a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem play set with some figures. And well, she's I want to play with that. With that. It has a uh, mutagen. You know, they used to call oh, it the ooze. Now it's the right. mutagen. Um, mutagen. <laughs> the mutagen is kind of sticky. Uh, so you better watch out for the mutagen. Watch out for the mutagen. Watch out for the for mutagen. The mutagen. Um, Cal, of course, she, she's organizing all of her American Girl doll, you know, different things with the, the bedroom and the, the you know, tea party and all, anyway, all, whatever she's got. You know, she, she loves all that stuff. Yeah. And she's really good at it. Um, but the dog... You know, the dog was kind of the last minute decision. Like, um, it's a it's a double doodle. <laughs> the, the <hell's> a <laughs> double well, doodle. <coughs> it's really a mutt. I got one. I of mean, those it's too. a it's a mutt. I mean, you know, so but it's a labradoodle, golden doodle that I apparently accidentally hooked up um, on one drunken night with a giraffe and and and, and, and right with a giraffe <laughs> in the mix. And uh, <laughs> and and had and had a litter of puppies, and so we got one of the puppies, and he's he's golden in color. Yeah, um, he's a he, and he's a pretty darn good dog. The one thing, well, there's a couple things. Um, he really likes people, which is really really good, that is good because he he loves the kids, and I mean, he yips a little bit, nips a little bit. Yeah, but also That's... Bennett Bennett puts his hand in his mouth, and I'm like, son, what are you doing? That's probably not a good idea. But he doesn't like hurt him. Like he'll kind of just yeah. Well, you know. that's good. He's just being so playful. so. Yeah. I mean, I think he's, I think he's a pretty darn good dog. Um, we're still working on the peeing and the pooping. Um, I'm still the, working the, on that. The, right, I know it's like a lifelong thing. It is the the peeing's going better unless he runs for the front door. If he's running for the front door, I'm assuming the prior people 
they they probably had a big wood door like we have a and yeah. and and I think he probably went out the front. So when he's running to the front, he thinks he's getting out. So we did put a pee pad down there. I was like, hey, put a pee pad down there and see yeah. what's up. Um, but he's peed a couple times in the floor, which of course we have hardwood floors that freaks Laura out. Um and makes me mad because then I'm down there scrubbing the floor because I'm trying to make it not smell like piss. Um, so he, so this morning he poops on the pee pad. And I'm like, hey, that's progress, man. We're making some progress. progress. You know, we're going outside. We're going for walks. We're doing stuff. I mean, I ran him last night at like nine o'clock because he was like just so hyped up. Yeah. So we ran down the gravel and I'm like, the good news is there's not a high volume traffic up through here. I yeah. probably end up dead. And I had my phone on with the light shining out in the open. Anyway, so this morning he poops on the pad. I'm like, sweet. Nope. Wasn't five minutes later, little drop a little single barrel, uh, you know, two feet away from the pee pad. Was he standing and, on the pee and, pad? And, and, no, not when he pooped the second time. The oh. first time he did, yeah, he actually sat on the pad and pooped. Yeah. And peed. Um, this little single barrel, nope, two feet from it. And I'm trying to get it, and I almost broke my ankle trying to get the stuff. Anyway, and I come <laughs> back in there, and he'd eaten it. Oh, no. And I was like, you... <laughs> um. So that's gross. <laughs> what? The? And 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 so it's awesome because Callan comes around. Daddy, what did he do? What did he do? And I was like, Well, he just ate his own turd. And she goes, What? <laughs> and she just bursts out <laughs> laughing because she thinks it's hilarious, I, like any human should. I, except for me, I'm like you, Momo dog. Uh, well, I mean, what was for dinner like the night before? Like, what, uh, was it like puppy chow, Purina? He gets zero human food. Okay, now, are you giving him so no? So like, it's whatever. I, it's whatever blend of dog food and he. But it's might, the dry dog food. Right? Yeah, it's the dry okay. dog food. Oh yeah, yeah, because you got to do the dry dog food. Yes. So you have the 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 single or double barrel turds. That's right, are. but it's solid. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh no, it's yeah yeah yeah. Oh yeah. no, we're yeah. My wife is brilliant. She's got this. Yeah. And the dog loves her. And now she's like, I have four children. I'm like, well. Congratulations. The girls wanted a puppy. Well. And, and they love it, except the dog did The dog did kind of bite Kate in the leg, and that made her really mad. Oh. Kate, Kate, Kate keeps receipts. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> Kate, Me too. Me too. Kate keeps receipts on the things that happen. Don't mess with her. And then she does like the Undertaker. She'll roll the eyes in the back of her head like something bad's about to go down. I'm like, stop that. I don't know why you're doing that. But I mean, she thinks it's funny, obviously. So, so, um, so, buddy, buddy, buddy's eating the turd. Buddy ate the turd. And I was trying to get over here, you know. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 you know, I'm, yeah, you I'm, called I'm, me this morning. I'm, I'm, it was I'm, just I'm, chaos. I'm, I'm Russian. So, you know. So what? I, I don't know. I I know very little about animals in general, right? Like I re, I really and this is an let me tell you question. something. Your your life is not incomplete. I I, I just <laughs> like I've had dogs, you know, like in, in, in right. you know before, but like we can't now. Lindsay's allergic to even dogs that that yeah. So that so she shouldn't be allergic. To. I understand. Like hi, like as hypoallergenic as you can get. Yes. Yeah, and Lindsay's which still, is what which is what this this little dude is. Yes, and so doesn't shed. And, and so. Um, but it's, so, but what would what would cause one to consume defecation? Like, what would? It's an animal that doesn't necessarily have higher level of thought. Remember, most animals are like stimulus response. Something sure. happens, I do right. it. So in his mind, he probably thinks it's a pepperoni or a foot long hot dog, and he's just eaten. You know. But 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 I would imagine having never eaten shit. <laughs> I mean, it might just taste like the puppy chow. I don't know. I, right? Maybe I mean, he just maybe he just wanted it like in a I, smoothie form or like a a gogurt. It's like a gogurt. I think for the sake of the show, <laughs> I think you got to take a bite of one of these and tell me what it tastes like. I think you, you kiss to. my ass too. I mean, <laughs> well, no, no, no. You would have to. No, no that's not going to help. But like you have to, you have to be near his ass. No, there's no, there's no way. Just like a little nibble. There's no way. Let me tell you something. I. <laughs> Yeah, just the tip, just see how it tastes. <laughs> not no, just just a little f that. There's not a chance in this world. Just a little Let me tongue. tell you something. Let me tell. You. <laughs> so before that, the dog gets so so the dog gets car sick too. This is gonna be the whole podcast. The dog oh gets my God. car sick. So so I was out running errands and and everybody else was gone. So I said, hey, 
you know, dog's not used to being crated, which we've had to crate it twice now. It actually did pretty good. It just barks and goes crazy the whole time for like three hours. It's okay. It'd be okay. Pete is coming to get me. Um, but, you know, it, but, but anyway, it, it actually, anyway, so, <laughs> but we were gone. We can't just leave it rampant in the house. Sure, I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. And he did fine. He did fine. I mean, he had water, food, all the, he, he was good. He was yeah. good. Right. You know, held his bladder. We got got back. He get him out. He go whatever. Well, good. Anyway, but he can't ride in the car. I mean, the, the, like the dog's eyes are like rolling in the back of its head. Oh, it's shit. getting sick. <laughs> I didn't notice. I was like, dogs love to ride in the car. Not this son of a bitch. Let me tell you something. No pun intended. Let me tell you something. <laughs> We're going down to yeah, that I should use that as the dad joke. The 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 dog starts puking in my truck. Oh. Now, I have a little sense. I had some towels. I had a towel. Okay, I had it all planned out because I was like, this could happen. Problem was I didn't have enough towels. Oh. So this thing puked down on oh. the side uh. of, of in my seat because once he puked the first time, it was all good. I got him. He wanted to sit in my lap. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Then he proceeds to puke again. He even got puked down in the seat belt. Uh, like the little the the where it clicks in there, like the the handheld piece there, not the not the actual belt, but the latch. Yeah, he got puked down in a latch. So I'm cleaning all this out, and it smells terrible. And I'm like, you know, human stuff doesn't bother me at all, but I am not a vet. What you what you didn't know is, uh, uh, Laura sent me exclusive audio <laughs> from this morning when Buddy. Uh, knock, knock, knock down the turd. This was as Doc came around the corner I mean, it was, and saw the it turd was, being consumed. And, <laughs> and let me tell you something, man. If if he was at a frat party chugging, that thing was gone in a gulp. It was not even like he chewed it up. I was like, how did he get a hold of it? Because I mean, I knew what was. I, I don't. I don't know. The dog's super. It's too bad if the dog. You know, if the, the dog, dog could super. talk and he would just look at you and say. Dude, that was not what I thought it was. Yeah, so, and, you, yeah, and you're not going to lick my face. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, no. He doesn't do that anyway. Dog does. does it's sleep. nutty. Dog does. <laughs> right. It's a little, little chipper. Is that a, is that a hint of Thai? Did you put some basil in there? <laughs> it's a little yes. uh, ammonia. The dog does. The, the, <laughs> right. Methane. Methane. Oh. Good. Mm. The dog does sleep in the bed. Oh, whose bed? Your bed? Laura and I's. Oh, not not one of the not one of the girls. No, oh. no, they can't fall asleep with him in the bed. Oh, we've been having a sleepover down in our room though. Uh, they 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 got their pallets and they've slept downstairs uh, for the last four nights. Oh, and it's been fun. I mean, they've enjoyed it. Callan had a bad dream. That's what kind of set it off. She was afraid somebody was in the house, and so to support and be loving. And she said, "Day, she said, I'm ready to go back upstairs today, Daddy, and sleep in my own bed." I said, "Okay, baby, that sounds good." Hmm. So, but we we've all slept in the same room. Did she dream that a dog was eating its own? Shit? No, was that no, the, it wasn't that. Sorry, that honey, was, that wasn't that a dream. Was not it? No. Now, she, does the dog sleep? Does the dog stay downstairs, like in yes. the basement? Basement? No, the, no. The dog is running around in our main level of the house. Okay. And then at night, the dog is on a blanket in the bed with us. Huh. Except he slowly migrates up in the night to get closer and oh. closer. Oh. And I'm like, go see Laura. Uh, <laughs> Now, he did wake me up this morning at 5.45 to go pee. That was good. Yeah. So that was good. I was like, okay, I, you know, that's a good pup. You yeah. at least gave me the heads up of what was happening. Yeah. But he didn't poop. Does, well, he wanted to save that for later. Apparently. <laughs> apparently. Well, I mean, he put, and then he pooped on the pad, and I was like, again, I thought we had it. I was like, here we are, face-to-face, -face, a couple of silver spoons, thinking, moments in time, I we're just, two of a kind. And then, no, and then he just crapped two feet I'm just thinking the old it. cinnamon toast crunch I mean, commercial. I scooped it up, like, on the fly. I'm like, how oh. did that even happen? Well, you know, that'd be a good trick if he could pop that thing out before it hit the floor, spin around, and, like, He just... hit the floor. <laughs> Next thing you know. <laughs> but it got low, 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 low. Um, yeah, man. So, Whew. it's a good dog, though. I mean, I mean, again, not good Likes to play. Dud, mm, dud, other than that one mishap with Kate, which I really think he was just nipping and she freaks sure. out. and You know, really good with him. Likes humans. Pretty darn tolerant overall. Um, doesn't love being 
alone. And so we're working on that. Yeah. You know, because that, that, I mean, that's going to have to happen because we have to go do things. Well, you know what that means. It means you're going to have to get dog number two. Well, and see, that's a couple people have said that. Actually, they said, you know, the, the way to solve that is you get another dog. <laughs> and I'm like, mm. I've heard that's actually easier. I've heard that if you get another dog, like the, the separation anxiety and stuff. How was that when you had another child? Listen, you're talking, you're talking to a baby factory over here, dude. Um, I'm hoping they eat their own turds at this point. <laughs> Cost me less pa- money. Pax may have tried it. He may have tried I it. Mean, I can't it. Look, it still does it. Oh, ADHD. Woo! Um, man, I'm telling you. So, yes, yeah, so the dog The dog is the dog. Eating turds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Little old buddy sat in a fuddy eating his turds and whey. Well, uh, no segue for this. <laughs> We're not getting there. Sorry, Rob. We go right from dogs eating shit. You're, you're not a turd. No. You're not a turd. Stats. Uh, stats is not a turd. Stats. That's uh, yes. Rob. We, uh, this is all. It, it's gravy train. You know, kibbles and bits. All the high end quality. You know, grade A <laughs> stuff. Rob Stats Guerrera uh, uh, of uh, all the shit we already mentioned, ESPN. I'm sorry, I'm thrown off now. Gold standard. The Gold Standard podcast where no one will and has ever gold eat standard, a turd. And has an LLC with Gold Standard. You know, he does, that's, yeah. That's, gold that's, gold that's, Standard that's Productions, yes. Uh, yes. Gold Standard Productions uh, and the Gold Standard podcast. Of course, he's a 49ers podcaster. Uh, knows everybody in the business, it seems like. He talked to Kay Adams one time. I'm interested in talking to Kay Adams. I'm very interested in having her on the show. Would you actually be able to talk to Kay Adams? That's going to be tough, and I would just be honest with her. Kay, okay, listen, I'm going to be I'm going to be doing this. Okay, I'm going to be looking at the wall the whole time. She's an attractive <laughs> human being. She's also very good at her job. She, she actually she, um, she she really is, and, I, and not to take away from any of no, I, I know you're not because because Lord knows that's that's the way you get canceled in this world. Uh, it's because what you can't say she's attractive. Well, I, I did. I'm sorry. I think it's pretty obvious she is, but she's actually really good. And she was on uh, Good Morning Football and now does her uh, own podcast, Up and Adams. I just laugh every time I see that. Not because it's stupid, just because it's, I don't know, that's just funny to me. Um, and uh, But anyway, yeah, so uh, Rob's talked with her and he's talked, he just uh, uh, talked to Chris Sims, not just mm-hmm. not uh, not that long ago. Some cool stories about Chris Sims. We'll have to ask him about Chris. But <coughs> Chris just seems like a good dude. But uh, Rob, very accomplished in his career, um, uh, produced shows. He's worked in radio. Um, again, like I said before, if I'm a professional broadcaster, he's actually a real professional broadcaster. So, Cream of the crop, rise to the top. That's exactly. Or and better then, yet, a Terminator like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. And the rest of us work at a podunk Jump classic around. rock and roll station. <laughs> Just where I was at. Anyway, folks. Uh, for this podcast. Now, we do have the Sure SM7B. Mics. That is true. That is true. And the swag. That's true. We got all the stuff. We got all the stuff. Uh, quick break here. We'll go right to Rob Stats Guerrera on the Dave and Doc podcast. Here we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, very fortunate, privileged, excited to talk to our next guest. You've heard Rob on uh, ESPN Radio 95.7, SB Nation, um, of course, his YouTube channel, The Gold Standard Podcast, which is my new favorite name for a podcast on earth, 100%. 49ers podcaster Rob Stats Guerrero, welcome to the Dave and Doc Podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you, man. And I just want to say right off the bat, how do you get a cool nickname like Stats? I've been trying for nicknames and nothing (laughs) sticks. Nothing (laughs) sticks. I never had a nickname my entire life. And I started working at ESPN as an intern. And my first job at ESPN was just to sit in the radio studio and hand stats to the hosts that were on the air. So some producer comes by and he's like, who's this kid in the studio? And the other producer looks at him and says, I don't know, stats. And from that point on, no one ever used my name to the point where I was working on stats. I was with Mike and Mike with Mike Greenberg, and he was late to work one day. He called in, and when I picked up the phone, I said, ESPN Radio, this is Rob, because people outside of the building don't know who I am. Right. And he goes, hey, Rob, it's Greeny. I need to talk <laughs> stats. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Greeny, I've been working on your show for a year. Rob is my <laughs> first name. So that's how popular it ended up becoming. 
that's, that, awesome. that's so true though because like there's like that's that's where you get your cool nicknames is a lot of interns on radio shows though i've heard that before you know what was the snl skit with uh with fallon man in the box or whatever that was the uh or am i the only snl guy never mind <laughs> unknown I, reference I strike it from the record uh, <laughs> Rob, you talked to a lot of people. I know. Uh, uh, I know you talked to Grant a whole lot. Grant Cohn, uh, who's a 49ers guy. Uh, Chris Sims, Damon Bruce. You mentioned Greeny and Golick. Um, Colin Cowherd, uh, Kay Adams. Uh, congratulations on that. Uh, that's on my bucket list to talk to Kay um, at some point in time on the show. Um, how great has it been to be able to like reach out to those guys and, you know, we're being kind of inside the industry and being able to reach out to those guys to have you on your show to have them on your show. Now it's such a blessing. Um, I've spent, you know, probably 15 years in radio. So I've been lucky to work with a lot of people and make a lot of contacts. Um, and, and everybody that we have on, you know, they're just incredibly generous with their time, but you went through some of the lists there. It's a, it's a nice thing to have. And look, there's a lot of 49ers podcasts out there. I'm hardly the only one that does this. <laughs> But I think I'm one of the only ones that can bring those kind of guests. So it's something I try to take advantage of. Yeah. And I think it's great. I think it's, uh, it, it lends a lot of credibility to it too. I, d- I did listen to your conversation with Chris Sims and I did think it was funny where, you know, he went through his whole childhood hating the 49ers and now he's friends with Kyle Shanahan. So he's kind of stuck. <laughs> Chris, Chris seems like a really good dude. Not just friends with Kyle Shanahan has his initials tattooed on his leg. They have each other's initials tattooed on their legs. So that oh is it's a true bromance, right? Yes, that is a deep bond. Oh, right wow. Now. How what? much effing tequila does it take for that to happen on a Saturday <laughs> night? Hey, I, I got an idea. <laughs> they were teammates at Texas, so maybe that was part of it. But to, uh, to answer sense. your question, Chris is awesome. He's one of the best people in the business that I've ever worked with. One of the most authentic people. Like what you see on the air is exactly how he is in real life. He just, yeah. there's no, there's no like fake, you know, personality that he puts on. That is him. He's one of the best people. That's awesome. Yeah. He he seems like just a really good dude. And I actually really enjoy him and Mike Florio too. I mean, they're just, they're, uh, they're great together. Their podcast is really honest. Um, and Mike's just kind of fun to listen to because he's, he's a little overly honest sometimes, which I am too. I've been <laughs> accused of myself. So I produced them for seven years. Um, Oh, cool. Yeah, so I know Mike pretty well also. he's I think he and Chris really are a good balance because they're kind of like opposites in a lot of ways. Like Chris likes to joke around and Mike sometimes is a little buttoned up. So I think they work together <laughs> well. But um, Mike taught me so much about the league and how it works kind of behind the scenes. I'm so grateful for the time that I had with them because uh, I learned a lot. Yeah, and and so did you get your start at? Uh, so you you worked as an intern at ESPN Radio. Did you go to SB Nation after that? Yeah, so I started at ESPN. I worked at ESPN for seven years, and then NBC started up a radio station. So I they recruited me to help start their radio station. So I went to NBC for about seven years. Got laid off uh, when COVID hit. Landed with SB Nation for a couple of years, then got laid off in January from SB Nation. And then I said, I'm done getting laid off. I'm just going to do this myself. Started my own company, uh, Gold Standard Gold Productions. Standard. We do the podcast now. Uh, we do the YouTube channel. So that's sort of how I ended up where I am. Cool. And uh, SB Nation, they're still around, right? Is, is it yeah, as oh, big yeah. as it was? Or are they trying to rebuild? They got rid of almost all of their podcasts. I don't know. I think in other sports, not just football too. So they got rid yeah. of a lot of the podcasts. They really, I guess, wanted to focus more on the on the websites and getting views up and things like that. So yeah, but they're absolutely still there. They still do great work. Uh, I recommend if you're a Niner fan, go to NinersNation.com. They're, it's a great website, but uh, they're still there. Just for some reason, they decided to uh, get rid of their most downloaded football podcast. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting. Do you think that it's a byproduct of... Because Years ago, and when you started in radio, right? I mean, you were either on radio or TV, or that's it. Uh, Or you could have your little 50-watt transmitter in your basement and broadcast to your neighborhood, right? I mean, that was your options. And do you think that the the market is so saturated now that that's causing some of this issue, that it's almost uh, just a little bit of noise pollution somewhat? Um, Maybe, but I just, I I think it's companies just wanting to slash, like, if you invested, if they invested more in the podcast side of things, speaking for SB Nation, I think that they could make a lot more money doing what they're doing because the shows and the podcasts that were there were good, were high quality stuff. 
Um, it wasn't the problem wasn't that the product wasn't good enough. It just, you know, you got to spend money to make money a little bit. And for example, like they were not going to send me to the Super Bowl if the 49ers had gone that that you have. To, I can't do what I do and not be at the Super Bowl if the 49ers are there. But yeah, it, it's it's very expensive to send a show to the Super Bowl in their sure. defense, the hotel, the flight the equipment that you need to send all that stuff, you know, it's not cheap. It's a major investment, but you know, I think the, the products, the quality of the products was good enough that it justified that investment. They obviously didn't see it that way. And not to get on my, my radio kick, uh, but you know this, but I mean, that's been true for a long time too. radio stations in general. They don't like to invest in the shows. It's, you know, what organically within our four walls can we do to promote the show? And, well, well, guys, I just want to give away some balloons. <laughs> That's just not in our budget. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, <laughs> what? Helium. Whoa. Easy. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, well, that's one of the reasons I love doing what I'm doing now because like all the only person I got to convince is me, you know, and maybe my wife for certain things. But other <laughs> yeah, that, right. Yeah. You know, it, it I do have the flexibility of like I've already booked the hotel in Vegas. Not that I think the 49ers are definitely going, but you know, you need to have these things planned out ahead of time. So I'm able to do that because it's just a matter of what I want to spend. And if I think it's worth it, I'm doing it. Yeah, it, it is. It is very freeing. I can tell you just from us doing this the last couple of years, you know, I can kind of say what I want to say, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and get chastised for it later, but that's okay. <laughs> And we can kind of do what we want to do. We can talk to who we want to talk to. We can talk to them for as long as we want to talk to them. I don't have to worry about, you know, dropping for a commercial or a time and temperature check. You know, <laughs> um, you know, those are my favorites. Uh, you know, disaster in the Ukraine. It's 842 and 38 degrees. Um, you know, so it, it, all the stupid stuff that kind of came out of radio and then uh, and a little bit of TV that I did, too. I just I don't know. It just it never really fit me very well. Uh, but, uh, it is cool that people can do podcasts now and you can just kind of do it almost, almost for free. I mean, with very little investment, you can throw something on YouTube. Um, I mean, production quality matters, but, uh, yeah, for sure. It, it is a lot more freeing and you're right. you you know, your, your bosses become very limited. Uh, at this stage of the game, I so been to a meeting in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't mad about it either. No, I bet. Um, so, uh, so, so let's talk 49ers. Uh, the most recent thing that still makes me want to throw up a little is the game against the Ravens. Uh, I, I kind of want to get your impression because I, I watching the game, um, uh, here's what I thought. I thought Brock was being Brock with the first interception that he threw. He was being very aggressive in that throw. I think he even said so. Uh, yes. I, I think it, it was a clip you played on your show from Brock. He said, hey, I was just trying to be aggressive. And again, if he throws the ball a second earlier, it's probably a touchdown. And the whole landscape of that game might have changed. Um, but he was very unbrock like after that first interception. Uh, particularly after the second interception, I, I, I felt like he his aggressive, aggressiveness just kind of went away. What was your overall impression of the game? Well, so my impression of the game was a little different than what I felt like Brock said during the week. He had one of the most open press conferences I've ever heard a quarterback have. Yeah. He basically said on the first interception, he got caught up in the emotion because they had so many good plays early on. He was like, I'm going to stick this thing in here and, you know, let's go. We're going to ride this wave. He knew he shouldn't have thrown it. He knew the Ravens were in the wrong coverage. He knew it was a tight window and it really wasn't there, but he did it anyway. You know, with Brock, I think we forget that he just turned 24. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> there are still growing pains that he has to go to go through because he's a young player. That Monday night was growing pains. Like that is just an immature quarterback not realizing like take a breath, let me do the smart thing, check this down. We'll get there. We'll you know, we'll get the the points, but not right. on this play. And to me, it's just like we have to go through that. And whether it was Trey Lance, we were going to have to go through that with him also. Like that stuff is inevitable. It happens to every quarterback. And so I was surprised to hear him just basically flat out admit that. It was very refreshing to me. And then after that, he, what he said was he started to hunt the big play, hold on to the ball longer, and he tried to basically get it all back in one play. And he right. needed to stay within the offense, take the five yard out if it's there, play another down. 
So I think it was a good experience for him to kind of go through that because now I think he knows like, hey, I just have to continue to operate this offense the way it's laid out and we'll eventually get where I want to go. I just can't go hunting for the big play. It was interesting. I mean, they were moving the ball at will seemingly for a lot of the game. Uh, We just couldn't finish drives. I mean, when you turn the ball over that many times, obviously, and then you're putting your defense on the field a lot uh, against a really good team. And I mean, I felt like our defense held up as long as they possibly could. Reminded me a little bit of the Eagles game in the NFC Championship where the defense really held up well. I felt like they did. Uh, all things considered, a little different because we just we didn't have a quarterback in that game. I was I was warming up in my my living room, yeah. um, just in case they called. Uh, um, but it reminded me of that game a little bit, it, particularly like in the latter parts of the second half. Um, I thought Kyle Shanahan called a pretty good game. Some of those play calls, the, the one interception, which was the quick pitch out to the flat to uh, Debo that got tipped and intercepted, that one was a little interesting to me. Uh, with how aggressive that defense was. But again, Shanahan's a genius and I'm not. Uh, so I, I know that, I mean, and I mean, I know coaches, I've coached football too. So I know that sometimes you, you're you trying to get the ball to another hash. So the wide side of the field is another play. There, there, you're, there's, there's strategy involved too. But uh, overall, I thought he called a pretty good game. Uh, but it just, it, it you could... T- it, you know how you get a vibe in a game sometimes and it's kind of like trying to pinpoint momentum and it becomes this mythical thing. And I think the vibe in that game after we got into the latter parts of the second quarter, I didn't feel good about how it was going, obviously just because of what I was watching on the field, but I just didn't feel good overall about our chances of win. And it just kind of seemed like our, what's a good way to put it. What's a good non radio way to put it. Uh, Our mojo. (laughs) <laughs> was just kind of gone. It felt like just the air kind of came out of the building. Is that is, is that what you felt too watching the game? Well, I felt the opposite. I felt going into halftime, I was like, hey, we've played as bad as we can play. <laughs> That's we true too. Three interceptions and we're down four points and we get the ball first in the third quarter, like one touchdown drive and we're in the lead and we've played terribly. That's true. I was sitting here like, if I were the Ravens at that point, I would have been like, we're letting them stay in this game. They're trying to give us the game and we are not putting it away. So going into the third, I was like, here we go. Like we can do it. And if you looked, uh, Kyle Shanahan in the third quarter this year has absolutely destroyed teams. They are yes. annihilating teams in the third quarter. So I, I was sitting there kind of like, okay, here we go. I changed my shirt. I put in my hoodie, you know, to try the mojo a little bit. I got, I got you. Yeah. And four minutes into the third quarter, it was 30 to 12. Yeah. It just completely went the other way in the second half. Brock obviously threw more interceptions and it just they once it snowballed, you know, that was it. The game just kind of they just never got going. They just, right. and they couldn't couldn't finish the drives. Like I said, it wasn't that you couldn't move the ball and, mm-hmm. and the defense played great. And and I, I texted Dave and I was like, y- y'all are the better team. You've just not played you you have played the the most horrible game possible, yeah. And 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 at halftime you were still only down by four, and I think that was the that was the biggest thing I took from it. I was like, they played about as awful as you could possibly play, and still had an opportunity going into the second half, but then laid an egg, and that's what happens. Eventually, it's going to catch up with you. The Ravens are a good team. I mean, I'm not saying yeah, I'm not saying they're not a good team. They're a very good team, but. San Francisco, minus not being able to score, you can clearly see how, how good of a team that they actually were. Yeah, Inter- I, I, interestingly enough, too, is I mean, at the end of that game, if Darnold throws a touchdown pass, it's a one score game. And I'm like, the Raiders have right. to be shitting at that point, right? Thinking, what is going on? Like, what do we have to do to beat this team? We have Sam Darnold in, and we are one score away from this being really interesting. That's why I think, like you said it earlier, the defense was really good in this game. The Mm -hmm. Ravens had three touchdown drives on the night. One started at their 47-yard line. One started at the Niners' 44-yard line. And the other started at the Niners' 9-yard line. Yeah. When you put your defense in that kind of position, they're going to give up points. So I thought that's why the turnovers were really damaging because it wasn't just, hey, we're not scoring ourselves it was we're not scoring and we're going to put you in a position where it's very easy for you to score right yeah we we were, the defense was in terrible positions all night um and i think actually played one of their better games of the year to be completely honest because that's a really good ravens team mm-hmm. um 
So, so you know, we the commanders this weekend, uh, and they're down. They're two starting cornerbacks. Uh, they're second or third string quarterback Jacoby Brissett. He is uh, listed as questionable now. Um, their defensive line is suspect. Their offensive line is suspect. However, comma, do you feel like that that could be a bit of a trap game for the 49ers? On paper, we I, I think that the line right now is 14 points on that game, or at least it was the last time I looked. Not after the the, the whooping that just happened, though. Um, <laughs> but no, I think it was like as of like yesterday. I think it was like 14 points. No, it's, a, 14 there points. Is two, it's two touchdowns. Yeah. So, so I, I'm just wondering, you know, do you think that's a bit of a trap game for the 49ers? Because a team like the Commanders, to me, you're playing them at home. They're not playing for anything really other than pride. If they kind of get you reeling a little bit at any point in the game, sometimes it's hard to turn that off. Do you, do you feel like it's a trap game or do you think we'll bounce back fine? It's a short week. They got to fly across the country. It's an early body clock game because it starts at 10 a.m. You know, to Pacific that. time. Yeah. Um, I don't care. You've burned through all that now. You have to win two out. Of, you had to win two out of the three last games of the season to win the number one seed. You've lost right. the Ravens. So you have burned through your cushion now. Don't give me trap game. Don't give me anything. The commanders stink. They're <laughs> awful. They can't That's play that in a cowboy movie. Right. Don't play <laughs> excuse to lose to this team they're on the backup quarterback you mentioned the the defensive backs that are going to be out for this team they have allowed 60 sacks this year six zero sacks that's not an exaggeration that is the actual number they're on terrible to give up the fourth most points in a single season than any team has ever given up in a single season if you can't get right against this team you have major (laughs) <laughs> problems. So the Niners better kick the hell out of the Commanders. Um, the Commanders, and then then the Rams, and the Rams are starting to look a little scary now. Yes, they absolutely are. They, I mean, Sean McVay didn't forget how to coach, and he's right. got <laughs> Hall of Fame quarterback, right? Cup, Puka Nakua, who's going to set the single season rookie receiving record this year. He's got a running back now in Kyron Williams, which is something that they really kind of haven't had since Todd Gurley was there, and people forget right. they were dominating when when Sean McVay had a really good running back their offense was incredible they got mm-hmm. Jared Goff to the Super Bowl so that should tell you what you need to know there <laughs> dang very <laughs> for sure um so I mean looking looking forward in the playoffs uh a really good chance we're going to see the the Cowboys or the Eagles again uh how do you feel about a rematch with either of those teams I actually feel more nervous about the Cowboys than the Eagles, to be honest with you. I I look at the Eagles. I don't know what's going on with Jalen Hurts. You know, I saw an article that came out when the Eagles were 10 and one, that they were the most miserable 10 and one team out there. Like, I don't know what's going on with Philly, but their defense is just not good. Like they're, they're not good. And Kyle Shanahan's always going to be able to move the ball against that defense. The Cowboys have a much better defense and they have an offense that I think is more functional. The Eagles, I feel like it's just, Tush push and Jalen Hurts throwing deep to AJ Brown. That's it. The Cowboys, I feel like, have an offense that actually can threaten you in multiple areas. They're more physical than the Eagles. Um, now the Niners have ended the Cowboys season multiple years in a row, so that <laughs> does give me the warm and fuzzies. But I think I'm a little more nervous about Dallas. But if we had to play at home, I'm not nervous about anybody. Home with a bye week, the Niners are going to the Super Bowl. I, I think I think I think it's really hard to win in Levi Stadium. I think it's really hard to come in there and beat the Niners there. The I want to say that you're the stats guy. You tell me, but I think we've been to 18 conference championships, which is the most of any team. I know it's the most. I'm not sure the exact number, but it absolutely is the most. Yeah. Um, so we've had our hearts broken several times because 18 conference championships, and you know we've been to seven Super Bowls, but. Uh, I do feel good about this year, but let me ask you this. Um, it, if we don't get to a Super Bowl this year or we get to a Super Bowl and lose, what does this roster look like next year? Because, you know, we remembered Merton Hanks talking about the 94 49ers, and he made a joke that if we don't win the Super Bowl this year, they're going to blow this team up because they had guys coming in on one year deals, mm-hmm. getting a chunk of money. Ricky Jackson was getting a million bucks if they beat the Cowboys. Um, you had, you know, you had Rice and, uh, you know, John Taylor, 
Brent Jones, Steve Young, Dion. I mean, you paid all this money for this team to to essentially beat the Dallas Cowboys. That's what you did because you knew if you got to the Super Bowl. But Merton Hanks is like, if we don't get to the Super Bowl, like they're just going to blow this team up. I don't know if we're there yet. I hopefully it, the contracts are structured a little bit better. And this is one of the things that I really wanted to talk to you about because I don't understand how these contracts are structured and the cap hits and all this stuff. It's, it's, it's voodoo witchcraft math to me. <laughs> They're using like some weird abacus from Mars. And I don't, I, and I mean, I, and I'm not just saying, I, I'm not doing the all shucks thing. Like I really don't understand it sometimes how you can pay somebody $300 million, mm -hmm. but the cap hit isn't that bad. Is it buried in guaranteed money? Is that how, like, or, or signing bonuses? That's a better way to say it. Is it buried in ancillary, ancillary money? That's a hundred million dollars. That's, that's the ancillary money. No big deal. But like, is it buried in other areas to where it's not such a cap hit? Do you think we're structured correctly to be able to hold on to the core players that we have now? Or is the inevitability of it, we're just going to lose two or three guys? Uh, well, I think you'll be okay next year. There's no like major person that's going to be a free agent. We are like, what are we going to do if we don't sign this person? There's a lot of like Jawan Jennings, Javon Kinlaw, Cleveland Farrell, like pieces that are nice to have, but no one that you're really like, there's no Nick Bosa. There's nobody like that. So that's good. Uh, you do have to figure out what you're going to do with Ayuk because he's it's going to be the first year he's eligible to get a new deal. I'm sure he's going mm -hmm. to want one, sure. but he is under contract. Uh, you know, you, you're dealing with a happiness issue there. Um, so that's good, at least for 2024. But I really loved the comment from Joe Burrow because we've heard so much about the 49ers Super Bowl window. You can't start Trey Lance because they're in a Super Bowl window, Super Bowl window. Joe Burrow had a great quote. He said, the Super Bowl window is my whole career. And I love that. <laughs> right. That's a good quote. If you have that kind of quarterback, you are in a Super Bowl window every year. Now, the 49ers haven't had that with Kyle Shanahan. I'm not ready to say right now that they definitely have that with Brock Purdy, um, but they might. And if that's true, and I think, first of all, they, they've clearly improved their quarterback situation from Jimmy Garoppolo. But if Brock is as good as Kyle seems to think he is, then their Super Bowl window is open for way longer than we originally thought going into sure. this season. It's true. That's true. Um, uh, yeah, you mentioned Brandon Ayuk. And again, and at some point, uh, I mean, Purdy, of course, still under contract, but well underpaid for the stats that he's throwing up. So yes. uh, at some point, you're going to want to take care of him. And I would imagine they would want to do that before it even gets to the point where he's, you know, just eligible for a new deal. I would think that you would want to lock him up, particularly if you win a Super Bowl this year. Let's, let's, you know, go ahead and get him locked up. Well, they can't. That's the beauty of it. Under league rules, you can't touch the player's rookie contract. It's in the CBA. You can't, like, Brock Purdy can't hold out because the Niners literally are not allowed to give him a new deal until his contract is up. So next year, he's getting, he's getting that crap salary, quote-unquote <laughs> crap salary, uh, and there, there's, that's just it. Now he's going to get, there is a thing called like performance based bonus or something like that, where he's going to get a little more money, but it's not going to be, you know, the 40 or $50 million a year he would sign if he could actually sign a new deal. So the Niners have one more deal or one more year of this super cheap quarterback. Now the, the, so the rookie contracts are five-year contracts. Is that right? Well, the, the rookie years with an option. If yes, if you're drafted in the first round, it's four years and an option, and it's fully guaranteed. All the rookie contracts are fully guaranteed. Right. If you're drafted not in the first round, it's a three year contract. Okay. 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 So, yeah. Okay. So then, so let's say, but I mean, if it's, it's, so I can follow with the math because I'm not very bright. So if, let's say it's a five year contract in year four, is that when you start negotiating for that? Or do you wait till year five? We were talking about for a rookie. Yeah, just yeah, in, yeah. If you're a first round rookie, let's yeah, just say it's if a first, first round, round rookie, rookie. You can you're allowed to renegotiate after three years. So after that third year, you I got gotcha. you. Give somebody an extension. You can give somebody a raise. Uh, if you don't want to, obviously you don't have to. Um, and then you can pick up the fifth year option. And if you really wanted to, you could franchise the guy for two more years. If you know which. That you know, you could do that. That is a technically an option, and maybe IU gets the franchise tag. We'll yeah. find out. But um, so that's sort of how that works. What do you think about guys holding out when they're negotiating their contract? 
What, I, I mean, as, as as just regular people as we are here, uh, I mean, I couldn't imagine holding out at my job uh, because, you know, I'm not showing up to work. <laughs> so, I mean, I know it w- works a little different in the NFL, but what do you, what's your what are your thoughts on uh, on guys holding out? I've always been very pro player. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that players have to use all the tools in their toolbox to maximize their contract because their their careers are super short and they may be even shorter. You have your career could literally end on any play. Damar Hamlin died on the field last year. Right. So you have to use all the tools in your toolbox. If that's what you need to do to get paid, I say do it. I support it. It's frustrating as hell. I hated the Nick Bosa holdout. I me too. He said it. It affected him this year. I think it's clear that it has. But they don't have like the nature of the business that they are in. Right. It's so finite that you have to do it to get all the money that you're owed. And that's a tool in the toolbox. And they should use it because the owners are using all the franchise. Right. (laughs) Franchise is doing all that they can to to manipulate it for their favor, too. And you see it time and time again. I mean, players who, I mean, go go way back. um, I mean, even even with Joe Montana or Peyton Manning or whatever. I mean, it's like, yep, you, you don't have what we need right now doesn't matter what all that you've done. See ya. Well, like yeah, Russell Wilson this year, right? Russell Wilson, right. Perfect example. I'm glad you mentioned that. Cause I wanted to ask <laughs> you about the Russell Wilson contract situation. So Russell Wilson has this contract, which by the way, he just signed with the Broncos. They traded for him and they gave him a new contract. Like the Broncos chose to do that. Right. And now he's going through this year. They beat the chiefs in, I think it was October. And the team says to him, well, you've got some language in your contract to where if you're hurt and you can't pass a physical, your money becomes guaranteed. And we don't like that because we're worried about you getting hurt. So unless you alter that language, we're going to bench you for the rest of the year to guarantee that you don't get hurt. And Ross is sitting there like, what the hell? And so they, they tried to negotiate something. The players union got involved and ultimately they couldn't come to an agreement. And that's why the chief uh, the Broncos have now benched Russell Wilson. Cause they don't want him to get hurt in the last two weeks and have to pay him a bunch of money. Why should Russell Wilson renegotiate his contract to make it easier for the Broncos to get rid of him? Like yeah. they agreed to this contract. If you don't like it, cut me and let me be a free agent and let me go wherever. But What'd the, you- Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Rob. Sorry, just the idea <laughs> stats. I'm sorry, Russell Wilson has to make things easier for the billionaire Bronco. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> what did you think about what Sean Payton said uh, about how it was purely a football? Uh, <laughs> m- <laughs> that's what. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, and he said, oh, "I'm not privy to any of that information." So he almost doubled oh. down. I was like, "There's no way on this earth that there's any legitimacy to that." Yeah, break that down. So the head coach had no <laughs> idea that after the team's you know biggest win of the year, the organization went to the quarterback and said, change your contract or we're going to bench you. He was totally in the dark about right, that. Right, right. Of course. What are you running over then? you got a Mickey Mouse organization. <laughs> well, it, Sean, I mean, Sean Payton, uh, as as head coaches go and sketchiness goes, I, I, I don't, you know, I, that guy has always just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. In that, and 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 you don't have to comment on that because this might be somebody you have to talk to in the future. And you can tell him I said that; he won't care. <laughs> but um, but I I just I I don't look at him and just get a good feeling about like uh, Andy Reid's a good example, right? Like Andy Reid seems like a great guy to play for, right? I hate the Chiefs with every fiber of my soul. Um, but why, Andy Reid, why, why is that? Oh yeah, I got several reasons. <laughs> we don't need to relitigate that. <laughs> no, I got several reasons. <laughs> You like the Ravens, dude. One of them, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love those guys too. Uh, I'm not a big fan of bird teams. Number one, <laughs> right? Uh, every bird team this year in a row. Too. Yeah, we yeah. play all the birds. But I mean, you look at Andy Reid. You like to. You think you'd probably like to play for him, right? Like if you look at Kyle Shanahan, you probably like to play for him. Um, you know, Sean McVay. I think you'd probably like to play for him. I mean, I, I like a lot of these coaches. I think you would want to play for. Peyton does not look like one of those guys. He just doesn't look like one of those guys that I would ever even want to be associated with. But and Russell Wilson probably wishes. Uh, well, maybe I don't know. Maybe Russell Wilson has so much money now he doesn't care. But that that's a terrible situation for him. Well, don't forget, you know, Sean Payton 
comes from the Bill Parcells straight. He's a Bill Parcells guy. Parcells was not the easiest guy to play for. He was known more for, you you know, you he kind of pushes your buttons and he drives you nuts, but he usually makes you a better player and you win. So eventually you come to appreciate him. I feel like Sean Payton falls much more into that mold than the mold of a player's coach like an Andy Reid or a Kyle Shanahan or a Sean McVay. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, Russell, obviously he's not going to be there next year. Uh, just, you know, and how old is Russell Wilson now? 35. Is he 35? No. All I know is I think he's 35. Know, the NFC. Get him out of the NFC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> has tortured me. Uh, I don't want to see him. He's 35, by the way. And I have told Russell to his face because I interviewed him before he went to Denver. And I said, you have ruined many a Sunday for me. <laughs> yes, and he has. It was good. So eat it, Russell. Yeah, I, I, we, we, I think we'd have maybe a couple of more rings, if not for Russell Wilson, to be honest. But uh, um, so uh, a couple of just weird questions for you here at the end, because I just I just want to get your idea. I don't know if you've listened to a lot of our shows but I'm not a big fan of the college football playoff committee. Um, I don't know if you can see behind me, there is a Florida state banner and I've got some Uh, Florida state stuff. I'm an FSU (laughs) fan and, um, and have been a lifelong. I was actually a Bobby Bowden fan. It was really how that came about. Big day today, right? Uh, yes. I, I love, uh, Bobby, but yeah, big day today. (laughs) Yeah. Nine, nine starters out or whatever it's going to be, whatever. Yeah. (laughs) Against Georgia, mm. we'll be there. He's playing like everybody. Maybe, maybe not Brock Bowers. Maybe not. They keep. You know, I mean, Mike Norville at this point. Mike, how do you feel about the game? We'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks, Mike. Um, a lot of confidence, uh, guys. I'm not even going to look at the scoreboard today. Just play your best. Uh, um, but what? I mean, the college football playoff. Here's here and, and and Rob. Here's the thing that like I never thought I would say. And I said this. It's recorded. It's out there forever. It's on our podcast. I actually said I would prefer to go back to the BCS at this point. And let me tell you, that makes me sick to my stomach to think about. But at least I could uh, understand the logic a little bit better. Um, what just oh, what did you think of that whole situation? And you can you can be as critical of Florida State as you want to be. Uh, it's perfectly fine with me. Well, let me just first say I'm speaking as an outsider because I do not watch college football. I I don't watch minor league baseball. I only want to watch the highest levels of the sport, but sure. I don't like what the, when you have a judge or a committee, when, when what happens is not completely decided by what takes place on the field. That yeah. really bugs the hell out of me. Yeah. But Florida state did everything possible that you can do. They did it. They should be in the playoffs. Even if you think whatever, it's not going to be a good game because guys are hurt. Like I get that, but there's just something really wrong to me about you can do literally everything, the most you can do and still not get in because a group of people just decided, eh, this will probably be a better game. That's figure skating. You know, that <laughs> it is not <laughs> football. And maybe this gets solved when the, the playoff gets bigger. And so then it's like, well, they'll put them in anyway and it won't be a big deal. So hopefully that kind of goes away. But I just don't like when what's decided is not totally and 100% dependent on what happens between the white lines. Yeah, 100% agree. I had some more colorful language to explain what I felt about uh, our friends of the college football playoff committee. I I basically blame ESPN for a lot of it. I just still do um, because I just like blaming ESPN for stuff. (laughs) And again, you don't have to comment about ESPN either, but I have had a long uh i think he still does some freelance right? yeah I, I there's a level of hatred i have for espn the corporation actually i mean some of the people seem super great and i and over the course of the years i've met a couple of the guys i've met chris fowler and i've met you know some of the guys it's super nice guy. i've never met anyone who wasn't just super humble and super you know super nice to me so uh the I, I I think I think when when the marriage happened, uh, you know, at the chapel that night with Disney and ESPN and ABC and all those guys got married, that was kind of the end of it. But um, anyway, I'm just uh, I don't know. I'm not a big ESPN fan in general, but uh, I don't know what kind of influence they have over the college football playoff committee. I know they would say they don't have any 
I find that hard to believe. I mean, I actually find it asinine that they would even say it. But, I mean, come on. They, they have some, you know, it, it's about ratings. It's about money. And, you know, they, I mean, uh, like you said, a committee basically got together and said, Florida State can't win this thing. Let's keep them out. Right. And well, we think, that's what we think it'll be a better game. The rating will be right. Cause if it's a blowout, people aren't going to watch. Yeah. That's part of it. That's, I think maybe that's why they had the committee, right. To kind of have those sort of guardrails. Cause ultimately they just want good games. They don't care who it is. And, they don't want a Georgia TCU. That's what they were afraid of. Right. That was, yeah. yeah. That's right. what they were afraid of. Well, they did that a long time ago in TV, right? Is the Nielsen ratings. I mean, we should just have the Nielsen committee. <laughs> Right. Like the Nielsen committee should just get together and decide like the Super Bowl and, uh, you know, let's, all let's... Of these flavors and you choose to be salty. <laughs> <laughs> so what's moving on? Because he'll he'll go because it, and it'll be fair. What, what's next for you, Rob? What's 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 coming up down the pike for you? Exciting things, new things, different yeah, things. Well, we're just trying. Hopefully, you know, the night we know the Niners are going to be in the playoffs. So um, I'm just trying to set up some guests because, like I said, the guests are one of the things I think we do at the Gold Standard Network that that we can do at a level that's above a lot of other places because of the experiences I've had. Um, so I'd love to get one of the things I'm working on now is I'm hoping we can get Joe Staley to join us because he's nice. joined oh, us yeah, awesome. in episodes. Joe is an awesome guy. And he would join us for the playoffs two years ago. He did it. And then they won. And he was like, well, they won. I have to come back on like, he's texting <laughs> me. Like I have to come back. That's so, awesome. Like, he, he is very much a fan. Like all of us are, which is really cool. So we're trying to get that. And like I said, if they go to the Super Bowl, we'll be there. I got my request into the league for the credential. I want to be, you know, on radio row talking to people at the press conferences every day. So, you know, I'm just hoping that the Niners can, be the team that we all think they can be because if they are, it's going to be very fun. We've got a fun, what is it? Five, six weeks ahead of us. Awesome. Yeah. I'm excited too. I just, I feel pretty good about this team this year. Uh, and yeah, I certainly being a lifelong 49ers fan, I'm sick of sitting on five <laughs> wins. We need, we need another one. We need one more Lombardi. Uh, actually we need two more total so we can be number one. That. Yeah. Oh, I'll take as many, take as many as I can get. They have um, to get one. They have to get one. This team is so good. This team is, is historically good. Christian McCaffrey has 21 touchdowns. That's absurd. But it if is. they win the Super Bowl, we're just going to forget it. Well, it, yeah, it, it you're like, right. never happened. And they don't deserve that. Totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, Who picked them at the beginning of the year, Dave? Who did that? I, I believe that was you. Oh, man. I believe that was you. That? Boy, what do you get if you're right? Nothing. No. <laughs> Our no. budget's super low. Yeah, I'll get a, I'll get a good job. Good job, Doc. You, you congratulations. And Dave will be over the moon, and that's 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 good enough. That's good I'll enough. be uh, yeah. That's good I'll enough. be I'll be a happy guy. I um, wish I'd put some money on it. I will not lie. Yeah, I wish, right. I wish I had put some money on it. Um, well, Rob, listen, I appreciate you being on the show. Uh, appreciate you hanging out with us, uh, taking some time on your uh, Saturday morning. I know you got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, would love to talk to you again when the playoffs start uh, so we can kind of talk, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, right after we win the NFC championship, that would be yeah. great too. That'd be killer. Uh, and if you, and if you're, and if you're on radio row there in uh, the Super Bowl, get your creds from uh, our friends at the NFL. Love to talk to you from uh, Allegiant stadium there uh, and get your thoughts on uh, how the game's going. Maybe you and you and Kyle Shanahan can get matching tattoos as well. That'd be great. Look, if the 49ers win and I'm doing some <laughs> celebrating, <laughs> who knows what you're in Vegas, baby. Who knows? <laughs> That's right. All right. Awesome. Uh, be Thank sure you. to Thank listen to the gold that. standard podcast. We'll have links to that, uh, of course, uh, in our description as well. And, uh, and we like having more friends on the show. So it's great. Rob stats, Guerrera, everyone. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks, Rob. Anytime. Let's do it again. All right. Thanks. Uh, big thanks to Rob stats, uh, Guerrera. Uh, that thank was you. fun thanks, stats. That was, that was great. I told, I told Rob, Hey man, we'll, we'll only keep you for about 20 minutes. I apologize, Rob. <laughs> we were having a good conversation. So I, think I, we, I, I think we doubled the time. I think we did. And so, uh, well, I mean, great guy. It seems very personable, obviously has to be in his business, obviously. Yeah. But, but you know, knows his stuff. Yeah. So, so when you're talking to him, you you know, and, and and what I what I liked, you can. I mean, I mean, obviously he had his he had his gear on for you, man. I mean, he, he did. I felt underdressed. <clears throat> you should have had your gear on. 
I mean, I'm just saying. Well, we're at my but, Niners but, underwear, but it's okay. There you go. There, it's it's. I mean, it's you know, it's close to you. It's the most <laughs> most intimate setting. The Niners are with you. Woo! Um, but yeah, I mean, he. I mean, he's that's. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, by all he's, means, get, go check him out. He's going places, man. He is. I'm serious. Yeah, he's been places, and he'll continue and he's, to go. Right, he is. Uh, check him out in the Gold Standard podcast. I'll, uh, it'll be linked in our uh, in the description and all that stuff. So, uh, thanks, Rob, and uh, we'll have Rob back on uh, in a few weeks when we get the playoffs cooking. Go Niners in the NFL. Go Niners. You know, we we kind of finished talking about. Uh, Why did I not bet on it? You should have. I know. You know, speaking know. of cooking, we talked about. Uh, Russell Wilson, because Russ likes to cook. Let Russ uh, cook. Let Russ cook. What a shit show out there, man. And again, I, I, I didn't want to put Rob on the spot to say something bad about Sean Payton, but I don't give a shit. I'll say it. Um, that that guy just screams sleaziness to me. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, the 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 whole bounty gate. I mean, obviously he beat my Colts. I'm sorry, he beat my Peyton Manning. He did. Fuck you, Jim Irsay. Um, you know, and 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 you know, I, 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 and, and if, you, if, if, if Brian Tui needs me on the bandwagon, I 100 percent believe that game was fixed. Um, <clears throat> um, anyway, but you know that whole thing. Just to, to touch on that a little bit. I mean, here here's the thing. Russell Wilson was awful last year. He yes. was, of course, so were the Broncos. That's true. I mean, they were awful. Nathaniel Hackett, what a joke. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean they, they so so terrible hire. Now, should they have given Russell Wilson the contract that they gave him? I don't think so. I don't, I, I, I don't think so, but they did. They did. And that's on them. That's yeah. not on him. And kudos to him for, for marketing himself and everything. Um, he's played a lot better this year. Now, they, they have not been... You know, you're not talking Drew Brees level stats, right? You're not, right. and and I think that's what Sean Payton expects. Yeah, um, I personally think that Drew Brees is a better quarterback than Russell Wilson. Oh, and right. I will always think that. Oh, one hundred percent. Um, and and you know that's just my opinion. So, so you're not going to get that. That that's not going to happen. You know, right? Um, so. <sighs> You know, I, I think I, I would. Here's what I would say: I would okay. do. I would have. Sorry, I, I'm trying to. I, I like Rob. I like Stats' point of view, where he's saying, you know, for the players. Because here's the thing: I used to be like the antithesis of that, where I was like, no, they play a child's game for. Da-da-da. And then I look at that, and I'm like, yeah, but you know what? They're 28 years old. They're beaten to death, yeah, and they're just dropped like third period French when it's when, when their time is done. So if you don't budget your money right, yeah, and you don't get what you can get because they're unless they get into something else, and and a lot of them do. I mean, whether it's, but a lot of them don't. I don't know if you've ever seen that the the ESPN 30, 30 years ago broke. I mean, yeah. that's a real oh, yeah, it's deal. a one, it's a real thing, and so that to that the point kind of, that they actually do financial advisement. Right. When that you're that is a one of the, in the NFL. So so I get that, you know. So so I get that, but I agree with what the Broncos are doing because I don't think Russell Wilson is their is their long term fix at quarterback. Yeah, I don't I, believe I, that. I, I don't think so either. And and they might as well do it this year because they're going to lose just as much money if they let him play all of next year. Yeah, it's only like a two million dollar difference or something. Right. In terms of what it counts against the salary cap. So so he's getting his 37 million or whatever, 39 million guaranteed next year, no matter what. So, you know, he's not really worried about it because he's getting his money. Now his pride is hurt, and that's what he's worried about. So so the money's not the problem. But why would you make take a risk of having to pay him, you know, seventy-six million dollars versus thirty-nine? Now you do take the money hit against the cap. Yeah. But you you are sa- technically you're saving the cash that you're not having to give him. So I get that, but for Sean Payton to say he didn't know anything about that and that was purely um, oh as he's full of shit. I mean that was bull. On, it's like dude. you don't know what the front office is doing, then Come you on. in trouble too because y'all should be working hand in hand. Can I tell you what I think about when players hold out and that sort of thing, and you know they get beat up and they're they're trying to get their money. Can, can I tell you like the, the rebuttal that I've always had to that? Um, number one, budget your money. You're making money that other people win in the lottery. Right. Right. Like you're making that. Now I understand you have agents, um, but that's your fault. 
You have an right. entourage. That's your fault. You chose a career. Again, right. You chose the career. Right. That's what you chose to do. Could have been a doctor. Could have been a lawyer. You could have been a, a, a bread maker. <laughs> Plumber, a plumber, um, teacher, uh, a teacher, a, a, anything. You could have done a lot anything. of things. Any, and again, you, you took the excitement <clears throat> of being a professional athlete because of, a, you know, for any number of reasons, you're super competitive, you're very athletic, you know, incredible you know, talent, incredible talent, and, and, and the work ethic yeah. to, to, to put behind it. And you wanted the lifestyle. Right. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, if the lifestyle sucked, people still wouldn't want to do it. I mean, because you want to be on ESPN, God knows why. And you want to like, you know, you want to be like, right? I mean, and you want to like, you, you if you're a dude. Or NBC. Or NBC. Um, 66 WNBC. Um, but, but, so you kind of pick that lifestyle. And what teams are doing is giving you an unbelievable salary. And again, you're playing a game. And of course it's work. But it's. But think about this. Think about this. Think about this too. How much money do those players help generate for? Oh, you I, see what I'm saying? So sure, it's almost like a commission based job. And so the question is, you know, how much? What What's your commission? What should it really be? Because you're you're generating billions of dollars playing a game, but then at the end of the day. You know the executives aren't the ones that have CTE. The executives aren't the ones who can't feel their feet or or end up with joint replacement. You know prematurely in their forties. And again, they signed up for it. I understand that, yeah. but but you've got to take care of yourself some because that I think it's gotten better. I mean, I think the the I think there are pieces of it. But it's the old dogs that didn't really make much money. Sure. And have all the health problems now. They're the ones that seem to have really got. That's why Bradshaw's still working. Gotten screwed. Right. Bradshaw's like, I barely made any money. Right, right. And now he's made a fortune between acting and and working as an analyst. Right. So, yeah. but, but again, but he's the small piece of that because you don't see Mean Joe Green or any, you know or whoever. You don't see yeah. them doing those things because it's it's a it's a small market to get to that big time. Uh, you know destination there with that yeah i mean it's just you know I, I i hated the money in radio i hated the way it was structured i sure. hated you could drive to the radio station and the nicest vehicles was the general manager owner and sales manager of course and the piece of shit cars or the talent right that's on the air that's right. generating the revenue win the super bowl and drive and, off and you know what i did you know what i did what'd you do i quit and went and did something else right so again, you get like, but you could go make money, more money doing something else. A lot of these guys, this is it. I mean, this this to make that amount of money. Uh, well, what, what I mean, what else are they going to go do? Uh, you're you you got this God given talent, but you know you're 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 not necessarily and, like like Frank Gore. Yeah. Okay. The last I don't know if you read the article, the last great running back. You should read that article. It is, I don't think it, I is have. it is an excellent article about Frank Gore. Yeah. I mean, he he was built for football. Like yeah. like very, very mild mannered, didn't talk a lot. He, he's not gonna be a salesman. Right. You know, he's he's not he's not gonna be up there teaching kids necessarily in class. Now he'll teach them at a football camp all day. But he's he, you know, that's not his thing. He was made to be an athlete. Now he's also had a very awesome career mm -hmm. and a very prolonged career because I mean, he did the right things to take he care did. of himself. He did. But what else would he have been able to go into to make that kind of money to take care of himself and his family? But that's not the fault or the responsibility <laughs> of the NFL. You know what I mean? I mean, like, cause here's the thing, not many people you're going to find that love football more than me, right? Maybe as much as me, but more than me, right? I, I would have given anything. To just be on the sidelines. Now, at my stature at five foot six, I know that I'm a physical fucking specimen. But but again, like for me, a job just commentating football would have been wonderful. And I did it at, at the high school level. But, you know, so like, I mean, just for me, being able to even be a part of the NFL would have been an absolute honor to be a part of that. Sure. And, and so, but, but again, I... I you say he was made to be an athlete, but I mean, I, I, I mean, so so was so was you know Cooper Manning. 
So, I mean, I, I, I mean, and then he got injured and that was it. I mean, his career was over. So, I mean, his NFL, his potential NFL career right. was over. So it's not the fault of the league. And again, no, 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 this, no. You're but, not but gonna, it, you're not gonna like. I, I'm not gonna take up for but I an industry. It, right. Like, that's what I was gonna say. It's I think multi billion dollar. I mean, the NFL makes tons of money. College football makes tons of money. They kind of get it, but but at the end, they they're looking at it as a business too. They and are. So so I think it's important for the players to because because the league you have is to advocate the, for yourself. Of course you do. The league is not looking out for the players. No. In terms, I, I mean, sorry. I should t- let me step back. The different franchises in terms of their business decisions are not really looking out for the players. No. They're, they're not. And, and, and you know, here's the thing. These people get these crazy contracts. Guess what? The franchises still have a boatload of money. Oh, of So it's like they could have given them more. Yeah. Even though it's this, this insane number. So they still negotiated it down from what they probably could have had to have paid oh, for the course. amount of money that's been made. So I, I, I think, I mean, I think we're on the same page. It's, it's, I'm not saying feel sorry for them. I'm saying, but you can't fault them. No, I don't cause, and I'm not saying you do personally. No, 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 but I, I get it. I don't you, fault. You them. can't, you can't hold it against them for trying to get what they get. It's just like when, when you, you know, with, with your, this, this most recent job you're in negotiating to get some things that benefit you three hot dogs a week. I mean, we started at one. I, I mean, that's pretty darn good. Mustard on the last one. Sweet. You're working on the relish and may, or maybe some onion. No, you're, I don't eat that stuff. Oh, I got all the right. That's right. It's got, ve- it's a veggie. Yeah. I don't eat that. Chili. Stuff. Do you like chili? It depends on the day it is. <laughs> We just squirreled. Uh, <laughs> it depends, but no, I, I, I certainly, I, I certainly believe in advocating for yourself. I just, I, it's hard for me when you've already made it, and now you're holding out because what you're doing is you're hurting the other guys that are playing there. And again, th- here's the sad part of the league. One of the sad parts of the league, teams, owners, I don't think want to win Super Bowls because they want to win Super Bowls. Right. Owners want to win Super Bowls because they know season ticket sales go up, merch sales go up. Um, you know, revenue sharing could possibly be affected by that. So, like, there's all kinds of reasons that teams want to win Super Bowls that are outside of the reason I want a team, only one team out of the 32, to win a Super Bowl. So, the, the NFL's a billion dollar industry, college football's billions and billions of dollars, and and I get it. Um, and the players do need to advocate for themselves. Um, but you know, one of the first things that kind of ruined that a little bit was the salary cap. I mean, that, True. that they're trying to make parody in the league. And I, I think you got rid of dynasties by doing that for the most part, the Patriots were able to kind of do it anyway, in spite of, which is impressive. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think that, I don't know. I, I just think that if you're a player now, you know what you're getting into. Like all the cards are on the table now. Like no, I don't think it was think before, but I think now you know what you're getting into. They want high scoring games, right? There, you know, there's a, you know, you can still get hurt. Obviously, I mean, Demar Hamlin. We we just talked about him with you know Rob. I mean, you know, you know, Demar died on the field. So literally, yeah. And so you know, like it's still a dangerous game. So you. You know, I, I I don't know when when I hear about all the CTE stuff and that those are the things. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm putting pieces of a puzzle together that don't necessarily adjoin. So maybe I'm, maybe I'm conflicted because you hear players complaining about CTE and this long term stuff, and it's like, dude, you signed up for a game where you have to wear a helmet because they knock a shit out I, of each other. I think the, I think the, the, the old war horses are the ones that really. I think, I think that's, that's, I, I, that's it, the, sure. un, I think that's the unfortunate part. And I think, but, but it's almost like because of all that that they know now, I think players today have taken it kind of to that even higher extreme, and maybe unnecessarily in some cases, you know, like a Nick Bosa or whatever with with that negotiation. But at the same time, it's like, well, it's one thing. When you know Peyton Manning restructures his contract for this, that, and the other, Peyton Manning was already yes rich when he joined the Broncos. Right. You know, same thing with Tom Brady. Tom Brady already had plenty of money. The other thing is, is they're so marketable. You know, they're they're doing all these other things. It's like it, so so. But some of these guys, they they don't necessarily That's have true. All, have all of that. So they're saying, well, you know, 
I mean, you're, you're not going to see Nick Bosa hosting a Bosa cast. I mean, you're not. No. I mean, I mean, you're not. You're not going to no. see him on a nationwide commercial. No. You're, you're, you're not going to see him doing whatever, whatever it is. You know, he didn't buy a bunch of Papa John's restaurants. Right. So Nick Bosa... He's an athlete, and again, I'm not I'm not stereotyping because people do you know, people are more than an athlete. I, I, that, that's not what I'm saying. But not everybody I mean, has the charisma and the likability. But there, but or he, desire. But his way of making money is he lines up there, and his job is to go get get somebody. That's true. Go go get the quarterback, or go I get the it. running back, or, or or you know understand what the what the offense the blocking scheme is to disrupt so that somebody else can make the tackle. That's how he makes his money. So yeah. he's got to go for all that he can get because he's not going to have the other opportunities necessarily unless he makes his money in football, then tries to invest it after the fact. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and the, and the broke thing talks about all how they, you know, they, they have, you know, like Travis Henry has like 13 kids by 12 women <laughs> You know, I mean, that's not a good decision. No, it's I mean, not. that's you know, that, that that's that's not. I don't have sympathy for that because you you did that to yourself, right? But if that's your primary means of income, number one, you shouldn't be doing that. Number two, invest your money, do things like the rest of us are trying to do for for stability, right? You know, so you you I don't feel bad for him in that sense, but I don't feel bad for the team and the league. If, yeah, if no. they're willing to try to get that for themselves. Yeah, no, I and I get it. I just, it's the, the holdout stuff and stuff, again, I, I just... It does hurt the team, and it hurts it, the player. Players messed up up here because they're yeah. not training as hard. They're not training with their guys. They do, they understand that they, they do look a little bit selfish. They do. Yeah. Um. You know, and... and that's know. a that's a that's a hard thing. It is, and I see it both ways. I really do. Like I I try not to sit on the fence with stuff, but you know, again, just just don't mess with my Niners, guys. I get know? it. Just pay I get pay it, people brother. pay hey, people to I play think, for the Niners. I think they have done a great job. I mean, their their office seems really in terms of trying to manage the money right. They yeah. they really seem to have done that. Now they're coming up. They're going to have some people that are going to be wanting some big contracts, and they're going to have to, you know, they have to figure out how to work that around. But yeah. I think, but I think that they will. I think, I think that they've got a really strong core, um, and I think, I, I think they're going to. I, I, I think they still have. I mean, you know, stats said it best. He said, you know, he quoted Joe Burrow. My my Super Bowl window is my playing career. Yeah, it's true. I mean, and if Brock, and if Brock Purdy turns into, he's not Joe Burrow. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I mean, he's pretty darn good quarterback. He, he sucked in the last game. And one thing that I didn't say, we didn't, we didn't really talk about, Hey, let's get the bad game out now yeah. because, because you got two more regular season games in the playoffs. Let's get the, let's get the God awful game out, you know, and then, and then it's like, okay, we played as bad as we could. It's not going to happen again because now we're refocused. We reset. We're moving forward. Well, Montana had one of those games too. And I know how that season ended up. Uh, so I'm just saying, right. You, you don't I mean, want to have you, everybody needs to stay healthy and you don't want to have that game in the playoffs. They're not going to the thing, and they're not going to have another game like that. It's not going to happen. I would I, be very surprised. It's it's, it's, it would just shock me to death. Um, yeah. Since it, we're, we're, since we're running out of time, uh, this has been a great episode though. FSU. Uh, so FSU. yeah. So let's talk games today. Uh, and scores. Um, man. So, so what, 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 what do you want to do first? We can do the Florida State game first because Here, I, here's here's my here's my thing. Okay. Okay. Here's my thing. I am very disappointed in in those and, and, and I don't fault these players. I am very disappointed in those Florida State players, particularly like Jared Burse and those guys that that decided they just weren't gonna play. Hmm. Um it bothers me a lot because what what they had the ultimate opportunity to prove was is hey even though we don't have our QB if our if everybody shows up like you know Keon Coleman plays verse plays I don't I, I'm, right you had the ultimate opportunity to show up yeah and beat what I still think is is in the top four for best teams in the nation beat them yeah and then you're sitting there flipping the bird at everybody telling them see look how messed up you all are yeah. 
and you could have done a UCF. Again, it's not legit. It's not recognized, but and, you hang a banner. You had UCF, UCF hung a banner. And potentially be the only undefeated team left. Right. Potentially. And that's what they were saying. They're like, if we do that, then we should be able to hang a banner. Now what you've got is a depleted team going, up, get going, up, going up against Georgia. And, and to my understanding, maybe Brock Bowers may not play, but I don't think it's really – it, but everybody not. else is playing because they're yeah. mad – they're mad because they lost. They're mad because they got excluded from the playoff, and they're coming in there because they want to kick the crap out of them. Yeah. So I'm mad at Florida State because bring your best squad. And that's not – and I get it. It's different. It's different. I wish McCaffrey and, and Leonard Fournette had never done that bull crap back in 2017 or whenever it was when they opted out. Yeah. They were like the first big names they to were. ever opt out of the bowl games. It had happened before, but they were the two superstars yeah. that both said, well, we're not playing in a big bowl – we're opting out. Yeah. And ever since then, that's been what people have done. And that's what drives me nuts because I wanted, minus the quarterback, a, a fully functional Florida State team going in there to play Georgia and see what happens. Yeah. Now, me too. I still think Georgia would beat them. I just, that's just my opinion. But best against best, minus the QB, let's see what happens because if you can't deny that that Florida State defense oh. is excellent. Oh, yeah. But. I mean, I, I think Georgia's going to kick the crap out of them. I, and, and, that's cra- and that's crap because then what's going to happen is the, the committee says, see, this is what we said was going to happen. Yeah. We we said this, it was going to be a butt kicking, and and here's the butt kicking. Except people are not in there All that would that, that, that would have normally yeah. played. Right. Yeah. So I'm going, I'm going 52 because the dogs are mad. What's that coming down the track? What's that coming down the track? It's the mean machine in the red and black. It's the mean machine. <laughs> Ain't nothing finer in the land. I hate you, hate you, Georgia fans. Um, anyway, I think it's going to be 52 to 17 if they can get 17. I 52. think it could be. 52-17. I think it could be. Yeah, I again, I'm going to watch that game knowing – pretty much what the outcome is going to be. Um, and it didn't have to be that way. And I'm not trying to poop on your team, but, it, but that, that upsets no. me because I wanted I wanted a full-strength team. It's Dude. still a great bowl. I mean, I mean, they're in the Orange Bowl. I know. Show I know. up because you've got every opportunity. And here's the thing. E, okay, fine. You lose the game, but your defense plays awesome. You say, see, you still can't talk a bunch of crap because we lost 10-3. to 3, Yeah. And if we could have scored, we would have beat them. Yeah. Yeah. No. But instead, no, we're not going to play. Yeah. And that bugs the poop out of me. Me too. I, I, I didn't like it. I expected it because I think a lot of Florida State fa- I know the fans were, but the players too were like, really? Okay, awesome. It's like, well, then, you know, I think, I think truthfully, a lot of the Florida State fans and a lot of the Florida State players were like, we don't want to show, show up because we want the ratings to be terrible. We want nobody in the stands. We want you guys to lose money on this. Because you screwed us over, and again, the we there is the problem, right? Who's the we? Yeah, who who is screwed us over? Right. Yeah. I I mean, I think that. Fucking ESPN. <laughs> I love how you this fucking ESPN. <laughs> Dave is salty, salty caramel. Dave, all these flavors man. I can be. That's right, and you're salty. I think he said that when we were done. That recording. was awesome. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's no, that's on. I think it, that's, did he, did yeah, he say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I couldn't I think, remember. Maybe, maybe he didn't. Anyway, maybe I can't remember. Anyway, but it was it that was, was a awesome. Good line. It was awesome, nonetheless. Um, I, I think. Yeah, I, I'm disappointed. I am too. I'm um, disappointed. I'm disappointed, and it's and 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 I I hate that for Mike Norvell because. Coach well, I mean, of the year. Gr- what what a great job. Yeah. And because of the the state of affairs, they they need to make some kind of thing here with this NIL and all this other bull crap where they say, listen, whoever. Because I mean the Vols, I mean Joe Milton opt out. You ain't a Vol for life, Joe. Sorry. Right. Sorry. Right. You you let you're not playing in the game. Yeah. You know, Jalen Wright, Jabari Small. Our whole secondary. Forget you people. You yeah. know, you, you you're not VFL because you didn't you didn't finish what you started. So no, sorry. You know, and 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 they don't maybe they don't feel that way. And that's fine. Then 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 you know it was just a money play for you anyway. Go the heck on. But that's what yeah. this is creating. Anyway, but they need to put something in there with NIL where if if you're doing this and you're getting this money, you have to play the whole season out. Yeah. Whatever the season looks like, whether you go to a bowl game or not, you got to play the season out. Yeah. 
No, I, I and and totally and agree just with that. and just understand that that's the way that it's supposed to be because it takes a lot of the fun out of it. Takes a lot of the fun out of it for the fans. Takes a lot of fun out of it for the other players because I mean, uh, you know, I mean, of course, Georgia's again. They're just so mad. I don't think it's going to affect them, but you know, it's not the same team it's that not. played the whole season. It's not, and that's and that's boo. It's boo boo. Yeah, big boo boo. But fifty two seventeen, and and you know, it it didn't have to be that way. And 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 I know those guys don't they don't really care. I mean, what an ugly game last night with Missouri and Ohio State. I mean, ugly. Yeah. I mean, Ohio State way better than Missouri. I mean, Missouri yeah. looked awful. Yeah. They looked awful and they win 14 to 3 and you know, and they're celebrating it like they won the championship of the world. And I'm like, it's I'm like, no, nah, you didn't. I'm like, you you played a depleted. Isn't it weird when a team's got a great defense, but then they don't have a quarterback? Isn't that weird? <laughs> I'm saying it's almost man, like I've seen that before. I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you, I am really upset about this. I wanted your team coming in there full strength. Me too. Minus Dadgum, you know Jordan, and 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 see what the heck happened. Me too. I do too. And that's I still think Georgia wins. I do, and, and well, I, I do I'm too. not going to lie to you. But but I think the dynamics of the game would have been different. I don't think they would have just totally annihilated them. I, I don't really so don't. I really don't. But that that's not you know that that's just so, and that, and that's what makes me sad. And that's so what, so since we're not gonna so we won't we won't talk again until after the semifinal games. Right. Oh, we're picking. Oh, so we're picking it off. Well, yeah. so I got I got Penn State over Ole Miss because you know old old Ken over there at Ole Miss. I. You know, and you 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 took a couple of our players because you came on campus, which you know, freaking anyway, the the douchebag. He wanted to leave the year before anyway, right? Whatever, go on. See you later. Um, you're you're a mercenary. Go have fun. But I'm picking Penn State. I think it's going to be thirty five thirty one, and that's just a that's just an aggravation pick. Um, I think I think Auburn gets it together. Auburn beats Maryland. I think that's a I think that's twenty four twenty. Okay. All right. Um do you want me to keep going or you why don't you pick those and then we'll pick the we'll pick the the that. I, I agree with you with Penn State. I actually think Maryland I, I would pick Maryland over Auburn. Auburn. Yeah. I think that could go either way. I don't I think really that, that's a legit I mean that's legit. I really do, but I, I, I could see that being twenty four twenty one Maryland. I, I you don't know you never know what Maryland team's coming. You just don't. Yeah, that's true. They they're inconsistent. I mean, it, Auburn played good enough to beat Bama and didn't. So I I think that even though they lost, I think that gives them enough momentum to carry through. Yeah, I really do. And and I mean, Hugh Freeze is a good coach. Yeah, I mean, I mean, one hundred percent. You know, one hundred percent. He's he's you know he's probably not still at Ole Miss because they had a couple of, of you know allegations and things. Not not the call girl thing and all that, but some <laughs> other stuff. Outside of that, that's what you know. So they they would have they were in trouble anyway. Those pesky prostitutes, man, they cause a lot of problems. And I mean, you add it to your direct line. What I know. Are you I mean, doing? I know. I, what are you? Do? Yeah. What are you doing anyway? Whatever. Um, <laughs> and then and okay, so so then Tennessee, Iowa. I I still think we get it done. Um, I, it's I think it's kind of an ugly game. Um, I, I really wish we would put up a bunch of points, but I think I think you're looking somewhere in like the I, I think what's the spread? The spread on the game we're we're favored by six. That's what I was looking for. I'm gonna go Vols twenty four, Iowa thirteen, and it's kind of and it's an ugly game. Yeah, it's just I think it'd be lower score than it's that. Just, it's I just think it could ugly. be like a thirteen ten game. It could definitely be. Iowa's defense be. is legit. Oh yeah, they're, they're they're number five or six in the Power Five conference, number eighth nationally. So yeah, yeah so no, there, there's no doubt. I still think Tennessee probably wins that game. Just too much firepower, I, I think. I and think, Iowa, I can't mean, score. Dylan Sampson can. I mean, excellent running back, and then and then our wide receivers for all the things there's to. The, I mean, it, it really comes down to what's Nico really got. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. The, right. The the key is if we don't turn it over and set them up where they can get easy points, yeah. they can't they're not gonna be able to drive no. down there and score. And once it's they get behind, it's that's it. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I mean they, they we've got enough offensive stuff left that we should be able to score if we don't turn it over and give them the ball on our side of the field, I don't think yeah. they can take it down the field on us and score. Because they don't they don't have their starting quarterback. Cade McMahon is hurt. Right. You know, and, and their offense wasn't great to begin with. So it's true. Yeah, I agree with you. 
Um, LSU beats Wisconsin. I actually think that's going to be a whooping. I, I, th- yeah, I, think, I don't think that's going to be I think close. that's 45-21 LSU. I don't think it's going to be close. Um, Oregon beats Liberty, um, despite the fact Liberty's undefeated. I think Oregon gets them, and I think it's probably 38-24. to 24. And then we come to... Dun, 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 dun. I would like for you to pick first. Which game are we picking? We're we're picking. So so let's do so, Al, let's do Alabama Michigan. Alabama Michigan. Okay. Yes. Yes. Because you don't really care about the LSU. You you don't care about all that. We we we're here for the Big Four. You're here for the Big Four. So Alabama, the controversial Big Alabama, Four. Alabama Michigan. I I still think. I mean, I can't say six weeks ago. I think Michigan's the best team in the country, and not stay with it because I do. I think that. I think they're the best team in the country, and I think they are a matchup nightmare. I'd said this before about them playing Georgia. I think the matchup is just really hard because if Jim Harbaugh has to win a 3 nothing game, that's what's going to happen, and that's right up his alley. Right. Because if he can run the football, and I think that they can run the football on anybody, yeah. I, I, I just think that time of possession becomes a thing. Right. I think that... Corum being hurt last year messed them up. Of course it I did. Mean, I mean, it made a huge difference. And, it I really think, is. and he is healthy by all accounts. I just think that I think Michigan is just a little too much. I think Bama's kind of on a revenge train a little bit. It would not surprise me for them to have a lead like at halftime. It really wouldn't. I think Michigan ends up taking over the game. I do think the score's pretty close in the end. I see it 24 uh, 20, Michigan Wolverines. And they get to the national championship game. And they get to the national, to the natty. To the natty. natty. So I've been I've been thinking about this a lot. I've been thinking about this a lot. Yeah. All the controversy, all the things, all the things, all the things. And I do think Michigan is the best team in the nation. Yeah. However, comma. However. You have the generational coach. You do of a generational team um, with with the legacy where legends are made. <laughs> SEC, SEC, SEC. Um, I think Bama comes out. They've had a month to prepare. I, I just, you know, Jim Harbaugh has coached in some big games, but he's not Nick Saban. He's not. He's just not. I think Alabama's going to beat him. I think it's going to be 31-28 to 28 with a late field goal, and Bama beats him. Or it'll be 28-24, and Bama gets a late touchdown and wins. I think Bama has to come from behind again, whatever, whatever the scenario plays out, but Bama's going to win. I think that as much time as they've had to prepare, I think you know they've, they, you know they, they they should have already been beaten, um, and it didn't happen. So so I mean they lost to Texas, but that was week two before they had their stuff figured out with Jack right. Milrow and everything else, and it's not the same team. So I think Bama wins, um, and 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 Bama heads on in in an upset. I I do think it's an upset because I think I, I I think Michigan should win the game, but they're not going to win. Okay, they're not going to win. All right, and then we move to the next one. Does anyone really care about the next one? I don't give a shit. I don't think anybody really cares, cares about this game. I, I'll tell you who I think is going to win, but I'm not going to go into detail. I don't think anybody I think, cares I think te- about this game. I think game. Texas wins because Washington shouldn't even be in this thing because they should have lost to Washington State. The Cougs should have beat them to begin with. So I think I think Texas gets to the natty. Oregon should have beat them. Oh, of course they should. And and they laid eggs. I mean, I mean, wow. Um, yeah. I agree. Texas wins. Yeah. Texas wins. I'm going to say it's, you know, I'm going to say it's a tight game, though, just because we're at this level. I'm going to say 35 31. Okay. But nobody cares. Everybody cares. I do think people care about Michigan, Alabama. I I think, I think that's the game. And I think whoever wins that game wins the whole thing. That's what I think. Okay. So, so you're, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. That, that matchup, whoever wins Michigan, Alabama, I'm picking Alabama and then I pick Alabama to win the whole thing. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see if you change your mind by next week. Not changing. We'll see. Not changing. Like I said, I still say Michigan's the best team, but they're not beating Bama. Because the SEC just means more. 
Makes me want to throw up. <laughs> Missouri fans last night chanting SEC. I'm like, you guys can go straight to hell. Really? Really? And I can't stand drink. I mean, he's a used car salesman if ever there was one. But they still got the victory for the SEC. He is a used car salesman. SEC. 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 Roll Tide. Roll. I don't even know what to say to that, folks. Sick him! <laughs> Rocky Top, you'll always be home sweet home to me. Good old Rocky Top. Rocky Top, Tennessee. It just means more. I don't even know what to say to that. Mic drop. <laughs> Big thanks to Rob Stats Guerrera on the show today. Thanks, Rob. Thank and, you. Thanks, um, Stats. We'll talk, to, we'll talk to Stats again soon. Uh, remember, it's episode 67, all things Dave and Doc, on our website, DaveAndDoc.com. That's Dave, A-N-D, Doc, D-O-C, dot com. Thank you all. Thanks for listening. Appreciate See you, folks. 24,000 strong. Happy New Year. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>